yes, I'm wearing a tank top in November. I also wear flip-flops when I went to pick my son up from school. Had a lot of people comment as though it's not almost 70 degrees outside. I don't care that it's November. I don't care. I will wear flip-flops as long as I can. If I could go barefoot, I'd be barefoot all the time. Because Thanksgiving is almost here and I've completely forgotten that it was November until somebody today commented on my flip-flops. We're going to make a pumpkin roll. This is the pumpkin roll that I used to make for my bakery. Sold a ton. Uh, tastes real good. And I actually have the recipe written down. So I'll be able to say the measurements, I guess if you're deciding to write them down as I talk, even though I talk pretty fast. The recipe will be in the description. Preheat your oven to 375. These don't take very long to come together. So, we'll get started. That's Feta. Hi, Feta. Oh, that was so nice of you to say hello. Pumpkin. You don't need to use Libby's pumpkin. I know some people swear by it and say that there's not a difference. Er, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Some people swear by it and say that there's a difference and you have to use Libby's. You don't. You don't. I've done it for a very long time. I've used both generic, uh, uh, like all the store brands pretty much, and Libby's. They all turn out the same. So I will say that Libby's pumpkin is, it's almost like a lighter orange than this, but it doesn't matter what you put all the spices in, so like, who cares? Instead of spending $3.99 on a can, it's like a dollar, this one's a dollar twenty nine at Aldi's, so. I guess go whatever route you want. I'm gonna go this route. So, you need two thirds of a cup. I need separate bowls for this one, uh, because sometimes it's like wet ingredients and then dry ingredients, and then you combine them together. It's fine, you don't have to do that. Uh, just do all of your wet first, once it comes together, then you add your dry, you don't need two different bowls for that. So next you're gonna do three eggs. Whiskey. Sugar is considered a wet ingredient. I don't know if you knew that, now you do. Uh, so, add the sugar. You need a cup of sugar. Together! Just, uh, mix it till you don't see any slimy egg parts. It's weird to say egg parts. Mix it until there's no more egg showing. Okay. I like to add my spices before the flour just because I really like to make sure that it's incorporated into everything. I don't know if it makes a difference. It's just what I do. Some of them are half of a teaspoon and some of them are fourth of a teaspoon, so I just, like, Put them together to cut down on messing it up. So, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, and cloves are all half of a teaspoon. If you don't like nutmeg, or if you just don't have it, leave it out. Add a little extra cinnamon and cloves if you want. You know, get some extra flavor in there. Nutmeg and the salt are a fourth of a teaspoon. purpose flour you don't need self-rising don't use self-rising because you've already put rising agents in it three fourths if you like nuts in your pumpkin roll you don't add them into this you're going to sprinkle them on top once you put them on the pan if you put them in like this they will sink uh, which makes it harder to roll it looks good smells amazing uh, usually recipes you'll see it say like a jelly roll pan or something, which is usually slightly smaller um, than like a regular cookie sheet size. I don't have that. I've always used the cookie sheet size. I like it because it thins it out, which means you get more spiral. It looks real cool. And you get more slices out of it. A regular one you get, I think it's like 10 slices out of it, but like this one you get like 15, 16, something like that. The sheet spray I use parchment paper a lot of recipes that are like use wax paper this cooks for pretty long at a high temperature I wouldn't do that personally but I mean if they say that you you know use it for the recipe maybe you can or it might be like a q-tip situation where everyone knows you're not supposed to use it like you know you're not supposed to use q-tips for your ears but everyone does it everywhere anyway because it's easier spray the pan so that it sticks better 
and spray it on top just to make sure nothing sticks while it's cooking. You want to leave it overhang. Makes it a lot easier to get it off it later. So you're going to tap it on the counter. Pretty hard, obviously. It's going to lift bubbles. You can see, I don't know, can you see that? Can you see the bubbles? See? It lifts, brings bubbles up to the surface. And pops up. 13 to 15 minutes, so I'll see you then. Well, it's finishing up in the oven. Uh, we need to talk. Okay, so there's a very important step to making pumpkin rolls that probably are why people don't want to make them because it's messy. Uh, so, okay, it's finishing up in the oven. While it's doing that, you need to prep your towel because when it comes out, you have to roll fast. Although it's not like a thud, so it's like a thud, and then roll fast. Anyway, so the dish towel. This one's huge. One of those like flower sack bags or bags it's a towel and bag towel flower sack towel what it's a towel it's it's a towel a tea towel i don't know what i was thinking of your towel out and use this little wow i am great with words uh sifter there isn't a measurement for this uh because you just want to do it until it covers your towel smell good in your house yet? It smells great in my house right now. <clears throat> this part is pretty tricky. It can be tricky. Please be careful. My eyebrows look super intense right there. Be careful. Ow, it's hot. So when you get it out, you're going to put it on both sides, hold the paper down, and then you have to just flop it down. Now you have to lift it. Again, carefully, please. Th mine is super uneven, so that's fun. But, okay, so now, because you have to go fast, because it has to be rolled while it's hot, so that it can form the right way without tearing later. Cover the top and pour sugar. So you're going to roll it up. You can roll it either direction. If you want it shorter, you do it this way. Longer, you went that way, whatever you want. Okay, so now you're gonna let it sit and it's gonna cool. Put it on a cooling rack so it doesn't get all weird and soggy on the bottom. And seam side down. And there we go. Let it cool. Don't unroll it until we're getting ready to fill it with the frosting. Don't unroll it. Don't unroll it. Don't. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me. Don't unroll it and don't put it in the fridge. Just don't. Good, good. Hello and welcome to the next day. My dress pimple and I welcome you back. You didn't unroll your roll, did you? Okay, we're gonna make the frosting. Eight ounces of cream cheese, six tablespoons of butter, powdered sugar is about four cups, and milk, no more than uh, probably four tablespoons. We'll see, but depends on how thick you want it. So let's go. And a teaspoon of vanilla. Did you do this on the same day? Probably starts to come together. Turn it up higher. You see it come together pretty good. Scrape your bowl. Now sugar, start with a cup at a time. Start on slow. Unless you want a big poof in your face. Some recipes tell you to sift the powdered sugar into the bowl before you mix it. I see no point in that because you, you can't over mix this, so you can just 
have it go until all the lumps are out. One. Two. It's just not the easiest thing. Uh, the sugar clumps together, so we don't need to do that. Okay, scrape down the sides, add another cup. This last go around is when you're going to add the milk if it's ended up being too thick. The absolute cutest measuring cup ever. Cool. Oh. Right. Just lay down the side so it doesn't out at you. That's the technical term. I did one and a half tablespoons of milk. Whole milk's obviously better. Heavy cream, if you have not used it, you will have to use a little bit more because it's thicker, so it's going to take a little more. powdered sugar taste is too strong add more milk by adding more milk it's of course gonna make it looser so you can add more powdered sugar also but you have to be careful because there's a really terrible loop that you can get into where you'll find yourself constantly adding more powdered sugar but when doing so it tastes more like powdered sugar so then you add more milk and then it gets too loose and then you have to add more and then you'll you see what happens so carefully don't do a cup at a time do like tablespoons at a time do teaspoons of milk things like that you can also add more vanilla that'll help too okay so now we're gonna unroll it um because this sat overnight uh it, <laughs> it might crack a lot it might crack a lot anyway and that's okay it doesn't matter we're not going for you know perfection we want it to taste like perfection but it doesn't need to look like perfection because we're just gonna eat it Unstick what you can without lifting the whole thing off. When you go to roll it anyway, you can pull the rest of the towel off. You don't want to do it all right now because, you know, this won't be the easiest thing to handle the way it is and it might rip. To start on, you know, the end that's closest to me. And I like to put a lot there so that when you do your initial roll, you have a really good start to your spiral. I should also note that the recipe for the filling will yield... Uh, the frosting will yield. Oh my god, I did it again. It will yield more than you need. It will yield more than you need. And then just fill out the rest. Uh, don't make it as thick. And you want to stop probably about. You can't see my hand. You want to stop like with within probably like an inch of that. Because of course, as you roll it, it's going to squeeze the filling down a little bit more, and it just helps to keep it from overflowing out. Yay. Some people like it in the middle. If that's the case, this is when you would sprinkle them all on. Super. Sprinkle them all on. Look, I don't think it wrapped either. Oh, yay. Put the whole thing in plastic wrap and you're going to put it in the fridge. Don't cut it now. It's way too soft. The frosting's going to go everywhere and it's a mess. So this is my gigantic one. Put it in the fridge. Obviously keep it flat. Um, probably about an hour, two hours. And then we're gonna take it out. And we're gonna taste it. And we're gonna see how great it is. It's tomorrow. I'm just kidding. I changed my clothes again, because why not? And my hair. All right. It is. It's as long as your arm. <laughs> it's been in the fridge. So we're going to cut it. We're going to taste it. We're going to look at the swirl, because everyone knows that's the most important part. If you're going for presentation, then slice off the very ends where they look real messy. Like that. I hope there's another swirl in there. And then you're going to slice up half of it and put it around the other half. Uh, sprinkles more powdered sugar on top. If you don't care about... Oh, and with your knife, smooth cuts, wipe the blade of your knife uh, each time so you're not smearing frosting on it. Again, that's just for presentation. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to do that. You know, I said I hope there's more swirl in there. 
there's not. It's not much of a squirrel, and it's definitely like 80% frosting. 90% frosting? Connie, I'm here. Two sips, what do you think? It's so good. It's so good. I must say it's better than that salad. Better than the salad? That's fair. And the salmon. And the salmon? Whoa. Why does it taste delicious? Delicious. Yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> Oh well Thank you for watching I hope it didn't take you as long as it took me And I'll see you guys next time